Welcome to opening up uh, a nice, relaxed, easy conversation with people just talking cricket, people we enjoy talking cricket to. And with me is, uh, is someone who's, uh, who's built up a huge reputation over the years as one of the finest leaders uh, of, of a cricket team, but also one of its great characters and certainly one of its finest storytellers. Ian Chappell is with me today and it's always a great pleasure. I've had the enormous honour of sitting in a commentary box with Ian Chappell over the years and it's, it's always been deeply fulfilling. And thank you for coming and joining us. Pleasure, Harsh. Huh? There's lots you've done in uh, on on a cricket ground and and outside it. Uh, you've been you've been an outstanding batsman. You've been a top leader. There have been great moments in your life. You and your brother scoring a century in each innings in in Wellington. I wonder if if you had to pick one that you remember most. Let me try and guess. Would it be never losing a Test series as captain? No, no. It's uh, it's things as a team that you remember mm -hmm. mostly, and uh, the the standout for me will always be um, winning the Ashes back at the SCG in '74-5, because I'd played in an Australian team that had uh, lost the Ashes, '70 '71 in Australia, so to win them back and as captain, uh, and I still remember to this to this day, mm -hmm. um, Ashley Mallett bowling to Jeff Arnold inside edge onto the pad. Greg Chappell at uh, bat pad, taking the catch. Rodney Marsh whirled around, put his hand out. He said, we've got the bastards back. Uh, bastards being the ashes, not England. Um, and that memory still, that's still very clear in my mind. What isn't so clear in my mind is the party that we had afterwards. <laughs> but I mean, that's, I've, I've always said that um, they're the things that I remember most are the, are the victories and the parties we had afterwards. Um, and, and when we get together, as we quite often do, a lot of the, the guys from the Australian side of the 70s, that's the things that we talk about mostly, are the, the characters that we played with and the parties that we had when we won. Did you always refer to your brother as Greg Chappell? Was, or was he just little Greg? Or, because I've heard you talk about Greg Chappell. And I yeah. thought, oh, hang on, his brothers, you must call him Greg. I, I always did that as a commentator um, because I felt that I needed to, uh, as, as a commentator, yeah. but I mean, you know, when I'm talking to Greg, I'm, I'm, I, You've Greg, got another name for Greg, is, ask uh, you about. Greg is the nicest thing that I call him. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just felt as a commentator and as a writer that, um, uh, that I had to establish something you know and, and I didn't sort of feel like saying my brother Greg all the time because I, I really felt that that would be unfair to him um, so consequently I just referred to him as Greg Chappell when he was playing I'm, I'm not so sure that I do I might say my brother Greg now uh, in commentary uh, if I'm talking about something that Greg did as a player but I felt that when he was playing and I was commentating I had to refer to him as Greg Chappell um, that was just a decision I made. Being, being captain, was that, was that a big buzz? Was it something you always wanted to be? Because you took to it like, like, like a fish to water. It's almost like you were born to be leader of 10 other men on a cricket ground. Was it something you, you dreamt of doing? And did you approach it with, with great intensity, for example? It's, it's, a, it's a rather mixed story, uh, the captaincy. I mean, I've always said that um, even when I was appointed vice captain of Australia, uh, that I really wasn't thinking about being captain of Australia and I wasn't expecting to be captain of Australia. But that sort of belies... Is that, is that true? Because it's, you're, literally you're just one step away and being captain yeah. is a great honour. Yeah, it is. But I mean, you don't... I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that I never took anything for granted in cricket, uh, is basically what I'm saying, I guess. But that sort of belies the fact that uh, when I was uh, playing in the schoolboys competition in Adelaide, which was an under-16 competition, and at the end of that, they, uh, they picked a, a squad to practice and then they played a match between those, uh, the, the squads, uh, picked two teams from the squads to play. And as part of that, uh, Jeff Noblett, who was a former, England, uh, former Australian player, um, he, he gave us a bit of a guided tour of the Adelaide Oval at one stage because we were practicing out the back at number two ground. And he took us out into the middle. He, he took us up to the dressing rooms and he walked us down the steps out to the middle and then we walked back up again. And at the end of it, he said, as you, or before we left the ground, he said, as you're walking back up the stairs, he said, think of something that you would like to do in cricket and write it on a bit of paper and stick it in your wallet, you see. And I don't think I did it at the time, but when I got home that night, for some reason or other, I wrote Captain Australia and I put it in my wallet and it was there for many years. And Like in the movies, you suddenly found it... 
the day you became captain, you opened the wallet and there uh, it was. No, I think yeah. I sort of remembered that it was there. Uh, and I think I probably threw it away at around mm. about that time. But, yeah. but it was yeah. just something that I did. I, I mean, I didn't have any great desire. In fact, I think Australia hasn't had many poor captains, but they've had a couple. And I think uh, particularly in, the, in one case, it was because the guy, you know, he wanted the job. He was desperate to get the captaincy. I think most of Australia's good captains have been guys who just suddenly got it out of the blue, and I think that's the way to get it. You you shouldn't crave the job. I, I didn't, um, but then then when I I remember getting the phone call, I was in the um, Overway Hotel in Adelaide having a counter lunch, which uh, consisted of a schnitzel uh, mm -hmm. and two schooners of beer. And, and was it on was it beer on the left of the plate or the right? Uh, the beer. I'm sure you remember that too. You've got here. <laughs> uh, probably, you know, I think I'm a right-hand drinker, so the beers were probably on the right-hand side. Or maybe the, the ones that were over on the right and the fresh ones are still on the left. No, only one at a time. <laughs> I'm not a guts. Um, and, and suddenly someone said, oh, there's a phone call for you. And I took the phone call, and it was Alan Shield, who was uh, a former South Australian yeah, so player, I, I but also that. a journalist uh, in those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah uh, he was news. He would have been news in those days. And um, he said, congratulations, mate. And I said, what on? And he said, you're captain of Australia. And I said, uh, you're bloody joking, aren't you? And he said, no, no, I'm serious. And, you know, they'd sack Bill, which was, you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with the decision, but the way they did it, I thought, was most unfair on Bill. You know